Right, Shalom, first and foremost, only of all praises, honor and glory, unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Hakadash, Tabahanas, unto the apostles and the elders, a great millstone. Peace and salutation to the Akiyam, to the elect that are scattered across the four cones of this earth, pushing this truth and faith and in all sincerity. I'm the brother Shamaala from the GMS Houston camp, and this lesson I'm going into Psalm the 15th chapter. You know, and um, the Spirit lead me to grab some precepts along with it. And, you know, that's what will be done. But without further ado, let's just hop straight into it. So, Psalm 15 and 1 says, Yahweh, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Or who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And what is that tabernacle? The tabernacle is referring to this truth. So, this is a Psalm of David. Right, he's asking, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell on thy holy hill? Right, because um, spiritually it's this truth. Right, it's this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we have been given from on high through the Holy Spirit. Right, through Yahweh shall, through Yahweh shall sacrifice. Right, to be able to understand these, you know, this um, this truth, understand these mysteries, and being dealt with. Right. It says, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. I said, he that walketh uprightly. So it's giving you the characteristics of a man, right, that is basically going to, the characteristics of a man that's going to be able to, Basically, stay in this truth. Get this truth, stay in it, and have the Lord dealing with them. Basically, what you got to do is give you the characteristics that you got to have for this wisdom to basically dwell in you. Because it, it speaks about, Scripture speaks about that wisdom shall not enter, you know, a malicious soul. And, and then that if... A person has that sinful spirit that wisdom will flee. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. And so it says, he that walketh uprightly. And uprightly, according to what? According to the, the law, statutes, and commandments. As Damayam, that's the word, Strong's H8549, Damayam, complete, whole, Entire sound, innocent, having integrity. What's complete or entire? What is complete or entirely in accord with truth? It says without blemish, and how are you without blemish? Because we all are going to be blemished. We are going to be spotted and defiled. But through your whole shot, through this truth. Is how we're going to be without blemish because he is our sacrifice and he was without blemish. All right. But let's see. See, so he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness, Taza Doc. And we know that righteousness comes from the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. But, you know, <clears throat> that's a, a righteousness that we cannot obtain in its perfection. So it's going to be faith to Yahweh Shai, right? It's going to be that righteousness. Let's get that. Let's think that's Romans 3. And like 23. Let's see. 22, 21. But now the righteousness of the Most High without the law, because the righteousness came through the law, is manifested. So it's telling you now it's a righteousness that doesn't come from the law. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteous, the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, unto all and for all them that believe, for there is no difference. Talk about the Israelites. So the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shai. That's how it's gonna, that's how it's done in these times. So that's how you walk uprightly, because they wanted to that being unspotted. 
without blemish. Okay? And we're only going to be that through Yahweh Shah. He said, and speaketh the truth, a moth. So you got to speak this word according to how the Most High designed it to be taught. Was that John 3 and 34? For he whom the Most High sent speaketh the words of the Most High. For the Most High giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. So for he whom the Most High sent speaketh the words of the Most High. So if the Most High is truly dealing with you, you're going to speak this word in truth. All right? Let's see. It says truth in his heart. So it got to be done sincerely. As that goes into your lob, right? It's talking about your mind. It says, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor do evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor. All right? It says, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, regardless. It says Strong's H7270 to go on foot, spy out, foot, walk, move, to be a tail bearer, slanderer. All right? Let's see. Back by search, slander. Right. To be a slanderer. And what is a slanderer? Slander. The action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging a person's reputation. So basically, lying. Go into malignity, defame someone's character. Right? So that's what it means. Let's see what this says. Let's go back. So a tail bearer. The scriptures speak about not being a tail bearer amongst the people. Leviticus 19 and 16, thou shalt not go up and down as a terror bearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am Yahweh. And that's really sound like what David just said. Right? When he said, He that back by not with his tongue, nor do evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor. Right? Thou shalt not go up and down as a terror bearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am Yahweh. Okay, right. so it says tail bearer. This word is rachayal, rachayal. All right, slander, slander, tail bearer, informer, a scandal monger. Like you just spreading lies, like shit. It's rumors, basically. And you don't know if it's true, but you just spread it to everybody because you might not like the particular person. So you just want to tear down their character and find something against them, right, to tear them down. Let's see, NLT, do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. All right. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am Yahweh. So don't spread gossip. We don't gossip. We're supposed to be men. Men don't gossip. Women gossip. They spread mess and foolishness. And right. we deal with the truth of the matter. It says, he that backbited not with his tongue, nor do it evil to his neighbor, nor take it that reproach against his neighbor. So, who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is referring to the Israelites, right? Our brothers in these times, like the elect. It's our neighbor. So, you don't do evil to your neighbor. You're not supposed to be doing evil regardless of who the person is, right? Because the person cannot be in this truth. That don't mean you treat them like shit. Right? That don't mean you do, do evil things to them. Because they're not in this truth. They're not the type of mindset to have. Even to these other nations. And you got to live honest right amongst these people. You got to live a godly life. Because this ain't the time to be trying to get vengeance. This ain't the time to be trying to retaliate. Oh, y'all did this to our people, so we're going to do this. Nah. We got to wait upon the Lord to come. The Lord said that. All right, so we just got to 
you know, teach this word, man. And, you know, stay disciplined and have that patience. Throw it in your house, shot. He said, nor take it a reproach against his neighbor. Let's see. Harpa. To taunt scorn, reproach, rushing upon condition of shame, disgrace. All right. Because, hey, we brothers, we all family. Hey, you ain't supposed to. You supposed to be doing them like that. Let's look at it in um different translation. Those who refuse to gossip or, or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. All right. Same thing as a slander, backbiter. All right. It says, verse four, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt, but he that but he honored them that fear Yahweh. He that swear to his own hurt, he changes it not. So a vile person, right? Ma'as, right? Strong's H39, 88, Ma'as. It's kind of like a a mini, a mini Hebrew lesson within this lesson. <laughs> you see, I'm kind of grabbing all these words. It says to reject, despise, refuse. So refuse. It says in lies, a vile person is contempt. So a vile person is something that's refused in the eyes of the Lord because of the way that they're living, contrary to the law, statutes, and commandments. It says contempt, right? Baza. It says to despise, hold in contempt, disdain, worthless, think to scorn. So you got to despise a person like that, that the Lord rejects and because of the way they live in their life. They're not living in the fear of the Lord. All right. It says, but he honors them that fear Yahweh. That's the basically the elect starting with the, you know, hopefully, like let's say the apostles and others on down. We know that we look to these men because they they display the fear of the Lord through all of the years that they've been enduring in this thing. You gotta honor them. These scriptures we go and give them double honors. You know, to the elders. Right? And then, like I said, even on down, honor those that fear, that fear the Lord. Right? And you honor them with your actions. You know, first and foremost, not just so much of words, you know, which, you know, we do. We speak good things. But, you know, mainly through your actions. And said, he that swear to his own word and changeth not. Let's look at that. NLT. Those who despise flagrant sinners, so flagrant sinners. Like you ever watch a sport and they say a flagrant foul? It's like intentional. Like he did some intentional shit. Like you no know, might have uh, pushed a guy or slapped him in the back of his head. That's flagrant. That's, that's intentional. All right. Let's see what flagrant says. If an action is considered wrong or immoral, conspicuously or obvious, obviously offensive, right? Blatant, obvious, shameless, it's naked. And it's crazy they got naked in there because what naked means to be in sin, all right, spiritually. All right. But it says, those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of Yahweh, you see. And keep their promises even when it hurts. So no matter what situation you're in, hey, we made a vow to the Lord. So we don't change our minds no matter what we're going through. You got to stick to it. All right? And it says, the last verse, he that put his not out his money to usury, right? Hey, I'm gonna give you this money, but you need to give me, you need to give me double back or triple back. That's what Esau be doing. We don't do that to each other. All right, that's what usury is. Usury, right? Not shock. Interest. Interest on the debt, right? A person had to pay you back, and you basically making them pay you back more 
than what you gave them. And some people will keep on adding interest as time goes by. You ain't supposed to do that. And it says, nor take a reward against the innocent. Right? Um, should just speak about in Exodus, not rest in judgment. I think that's like Exodus. Well, I'm talking about the first one. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. An unrighteous witness meaning you do testify falsely, which that's in the commandments of Exodus 20, not to bear false witness against your neighbor. So taking a reward against your neighbor or against the innocent, you basically take some type of gift to, to basically rest judgment like the next scripture would say. It says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Let's see. Do not follow the crowd and doing wrong. When you give a testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert the justice by siding with the crowd. Right? And it's good to speak about a gift that destroyed the heart. So you don't want to be a person that can be bribed into standing against the innocent, which is basically the, the righteous in Yahweh Shai, the elect. Right? And who's going to ultimately come with that bribery? Esau Edom. In these last days, right? He don't want you to be a sellout. Right? But we know that the scriptures say that you're going to have those um, elect few that is not going to bow down to this man's system. Who, he that does these things shall never be moved. Right? So never be moved. Right? Never be moved from what? Yahweh, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Go into this truth. So you do all these things. You shall never be moved. So David basically gives, giving you a giving you a rundown on how to act. But you know, this is not all of these, you know, um, all of the laws, you know, or you know, there's many other things that you know that are listed. Right in the scriptures that we should follow, but this basically sums up everything right here. All right, this basically sums everything up. All right, it's like a it's like a great foundation. All right, because if you do these things, it'll be easy to do everything else. So you know that's the lesson. I'm just edifying with that. I'm gonna say shalom.